In today's video, we are going to be using Python coding to create ourselves a simple quiz using if statements. To get an idea of how our quiz is going to look, uh, this is what we're going to start with. We've got a question here saying, what is the capital of Queensland? And it's a multiple choice quiz, so they've got three options to pick from. Okay, obviously the Brisbane is the capital of Queensland, so I'll type in B and I'll press enter. Okay, it tells me that I'm correct and my score is now 1. Okay, after that, the second question comes up. In which Australian state is Birdsville found? Obviously, the answer is Queensland, but I'm going to get it wrong this time. I'm going to type in A, New South Wales. Okay, so in my answer here, just put A, press Enter, and it says incorrect. The answer was Queensland, and our score remains at 1. Okay, the final question comes up at the end here. When is Gourmet and Gundy held? Either August, September, October. We know that that's just gone in September. Okay, so I could write in B for the answer, or I could write in the word September. Okay, that will also be accepted. So if I write in September and press Enter, you'll see that that is correct. And my score goes up to 2. And there's a final sentence there that says, Your total score is 2. You went OK. Okay, so it gives you a bit of feedback at the end of the quiz on how you went. And that's the quiz that we're going to be making today. So to get started, open up Python and make yourself a new file. If you want, you can go and close off the shell there and start from scratch. Okay. First thing we need to do to get started on this quiz is we need to set the user's score to zero. Okay. So we're going to create a variable called score, and that's going to be equal to zero. Obviously, that will go up if we get a question correct. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to write in question one. Okay. So I'm going to put a comment in first of all that says question one. So put a hashtag in and just write question one in capitals there. Now remember comments aren't actually part of your code. Your computer, when it sees the hashtag there, just knows to skip over that and it knows it's not part of the code and we'll just continue running the code beneath that. Okay, comments are just in their code to explain what's going on in plain simple English. Alright, so the first thing we need to do with question one is obviously ask the user the question and we need to get a response from them. Okay, so we obviously use the reserved word input for that, so the user can input their answer. So inside the input brackets and quotation marks, we're going to write what is the capital, oops, capital of Queensland, question mark. Now, we need to give the user three options. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write backslash n and put in a new line. Then I'm going to write in a, Townsville. Then I'm going to do backslash N again to make another new line. I write B, Brisbane. And then backslash N to make another new line. And put C. Uh, what can we put in? We'll put in Noosa. Okay, there are our three options. Then on the final line, so we'll just put backslash N for another new line there. We're going to write in answer, colon, space. And then we can close off our quotation marks and brackets. And that last little bit there is going to allow the user to type in their response, whether it's A, B, or C. Okay, let's just say that and test it. It's obviously not finished yet, but we just want to see how that formatting is looking. I want to see if it turns out okay um, on our page. So just say that as quiz and run that once it's saved. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So what is the capital of Queensland? We've got A, B, C in our answer. We just... The little issue that I'm not happy with is this little space where it just pushes the answers off the edge of the page. To get rid of that, what we're going to need to do, where you've got these backslash ends, we just need to get rid of the space between that and the letter. So after backslash n, delete that space so that the A connects right to that backslash n. Same with the B, same with the C, and then answer, just backspace it. So it just matches up with that backslash n. Save it and run it again, and you'll notice now that all the text is pushed back to the left-hand side of the page. Okay, so that's obviously looking pretty good. You can type in any old answer there. The computer's not going to store that answer yet, so it doesn't matter what you write in there. Okay, so what we do need to do now is actually remember what the user's answer is. So when they type in a response, we want to store that into a variable. Okay, so you need to go back before the word input here, and we need to put in a variable name. So I'm going to call this variable answer1 equals. Okay, since this is question one, whatever the user types in will be answer one. So answer one equals whatever the user types in for their answer there. 
Okay, so that's all good. We've stored their answer away. Now we need the computer to check whether they are right or wrong. So have they got the right answer or not? And we do that by using an if statement. So what we do is we write in if answer1 equals, now we use two equal signs here because we're checking a condition. So we need to use two equal signs to check this answer. So if answer1 is equal to B or if answer one is equal, oops, I'm going to write one in there, is equal to Brisbane and a colon. Okay, now what this is saying is the user can either type in B or they can type in Brisbane. And either one of those is going to be the correct answer. Okay, so if the user types in B or if they type in Brisbane, what are we going to do? First thing I want to do is add one to our score. So we're going to write in the variable score equals the current score plus one. Okay, there's a quicker way of actually writing this I want to show you as well. So we could have score equals score plus one, or the quick way to write this is simply score plus equals one. That's exactly the same thing. And what that is saying is we're going to add one to the score if they get the answer correct. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say a little message. So we're going to print a message that says correct. Then on the next line, we're going to show the user what their score is. So in quotation marks, put in the score, colon, space, quotation marks. Put in a comma, and we're going to put in the score variable. Okay, and then on the last line there, I just want you to print an empty line. So when it goes to the next question... It's just got a bit of a gap between the first and the second question there. Okay, so this section here, you can see it's all indented underneath that if statement. And that's just showing what happens if the user gets the answer correct. Okay, if they don't get the answer correct, then it's not going to perform any of these actions. Okay, what we're going to do now is tell the computer what to do if the user gets the answer wrong. So we use the word else down here now with a colon after it. And you can see it's no longer indented. Okay, it's pushed back to the left hand of the left, left hand side of the page. And beneath the word else, we're going to indent the code again. So this is what else we do if the user gets the question wrong. So first of all, we're going to tell them that their answer is wrong, and we'll tell them the right answer. So we'll say incorrect. The answer is Brisbane. Okay, that's the first part. We'll print their score. Obviously, it's not changing, so we didn't need to add anything to it. So we'll just write score again, and then the score variable will appear after that. And last thing we're going to do is just print an empty line. So when it goes to the next question, we've got that gap between this one and the next. Alrighty, so that's about all we need, I think, for the first question. We'll test it and see if everything's working as planned. So Control S to save, F5 to run. What is the capital of Queensland? Let's type in Brisbane, press enter. So it's correct, and we've got a score of one. Perfect. Let's run it one more time and get the answer wrong. Let's type in C for Noosa. Incorrect. The answer is Brisbane, your score is zero. Perfect, so we've got our first question working nicely. What we're gonna do now is question at number two, okay? And it's pretty similar to what we've got here, so let's cheat a little bit and copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to copy everything from question one down. So control C, we'll copy all of that. Go down a few lines and paste it in again. Let's start by changing the comment here to question two. Now answer one needs to be changed to answer two. So we're on question two now. And the input says the question. Okay, we need to change that question to in which state is Birdsville found? Okay, and the options we're going to give are New South Wales, South Australia, and Queensland. Okay, so you needed to change A, B, and C to the right answers there. Okay, the answer at the end stays the same because we want to get the user's response. So when the user answers that question, it is stored in a variable called answer2. Now we need to do the check if they've got it right or wrong. So it needs to be if answer2 equals 
it is C in this case, or it is Queensland. So if the answer is C or Queensland, then we're going to add 1 to the score. We're going to print correct. We're going to print the score and then print an empty line. Okay, that part's all good. What else do we do though if we don't get it right? And we obviously get it wrong, so we're going to write incorrect. The answer is, it's not Brisbane, it's Queensland. We're going to print the score, print a new line. Okay, let's save that and test it. That looks good. So we obviously know that one's B. Now this time in which state is Birdsville found? Let's type in C for Queensland. Bang, we've got it correct. And you can see now our score has gone up to 2. Alright, so looking good. And finally, question 3. Again, set out a very similar way to what we had before. So let's copy what we've got. Let's go down and paste it in and start rewording it. So this time, start with the comment. Change it to question 3. Change your variable here to answer 3. We ask the question now. Let's delete the Birdsville one. The last question is, when is Gourmet in Gundy held? Okay, and we're going to give them three options. It can either be August, or it can be September, or it can be October. Okay, so now when the user answers that question, it, it's, well, their answer is going to be stored in a variable called answer3. Now using answer3, we can check to see if it's right or wrong. So if answer3 is equal to, it's B in this case, so it needs to be equal to B, or it needs to be equal to September. Alright, so if the answer is equal to B or September, then we add a score, or one point to our score, print it's correct, show the user what their actual overall score is, and then print an empty line. What else do we do though if they get that wrong? We print incorrect. The answer is, it's not Queensland, it is September. We print the final, final score and then we print a new line. Alrighty, so save that up. Test it out and make sure all three questions are working fine. So you've got B for Brisbane, C for Queensland and B for September. Perfect. We get an overall score of three. Things are looking good so far. Okay, so that's our quiz part done. What we want to do now is just put a final message in that just gives a bit of feedback to the user on how they went. So I'm going to put in another comment here and I'll just write in final message. And basically, if the score is less than one, that means they got nothing right. It means they got a score of zero. So they totally sucked. And we probably need to let them know that. If they got a score of, like, say, less than two or one or two, <coughs> No, it makes it make it if they got two, they went okay, and if they got three, then they got 100%, so they're awesome. So we need to tell them that. So let's do an if statement. We're going to do an if. We're going to use the score variable. So if the player's score is less than or equal to one, we'll say that. So either zero or one for their final score. Put a colon. Now we tell the computer what to do. So we're going to print a message that says... Your total score is, put a colon, quotation marks, comma, put in the score variable and then a comma, put in more quotation marks, put a dash and write, you suck. If you get 0 or 1, you're not doing too well at this quiz, so let's let them know that they suck. Alright, pretty good. Next thing, we're going to use an elif, so else if score is equal to 2. So we use two equal signs there, because we're checking something. So if our score, or else if our score is equal to 2, then we'll print the message, your total score is, colon, quotation marks, comma, score, comma, space, quotation marks, you went okay. Okay, so if they get two, they've got a couple right there, so they're doing okay. And the last thing, we just write else. So what else do we do if the score's not zero, one, or two? Then we're going to print the message. Your total score is... Do what we did above there, and then say you are awesome. 
done. Okay, so just quickly recapping that last bit. If the score is equal to or less than or less than or equal to one, that means they're on zero or one. Then we're going to print the message: your score is zero or one. You suck. Else, if their score is equal to two, then we're going to print the message: your total score is put in two there, and say that they went okay. And then else, the last thing, so what else do we do if the score is not equal to 0, 1 or 2? Then there's only one other option, it must be equal to 3. So we print your total score is, and we'll put the 3 in there, and you are awesome. I think you got it all right. Okay, control S to save, F5 to run it. Oops, I know what I've forgotten, I forgot a quote, uh, colon just there after the word else. Just be careful with that, I do that all the time, so I'm actually got a colon in after else colon in here after the else if and also a colon in here after the if all right i'll save that and run it again so let's get these all wrong so we'll do a for townsville a for new south wales a for august it tells us that we've got these incorrect the whole way through and then the last little message there your total score is zero you suck perfect let's get two of these right so we'll get brisbane Queensland, August. So we get two right now. It says your total score is two. You went okay. Okay, let's try and better it now and get 100%. Oops. So B for Brisbane, C for Queensland, B for September. Your total score is three. You are awesome. Perfect. So that is our little quiz all done and dusted in Python. If you want to really test that out, better do it one more time while the video is rolling. You want to type in the whole words for the answer, not just the letters. So let's write in Brisbane. Correct. Queensland. Correct. September. Correct. Awesome. So when we use the whole words as our answers, that's also acceptable. Okay, and we do get the question correct. Alrighty, so save what you've got and that will do us for this tutorial.